We often talk about storing food and making sure you are building the best prepper's pantry that you can. Our goal is to always make sure that we live a sustainable life and put the food up that we want to put up and take care of our family for the years to come. Well, if you worked all this time to buy or you worked all this time to grow, you start putting the food up in your pantry. What are mistakes that people make when they're storing up food to realize all of a sudden it molds, it goes bad, it doesn't last, it has insects, it has rodents? What are the mistakes that we're making to cause our prepper's pantry not to last as long as it should? So we want to stockpile. We want to be smart with stockpiling to make sure that the things that we're putting up will last forever. If not forever, at least a few decades. If we put them up correctly, they will. If we put them up incorrectly, we're making mistakes, we're costing a lot of money and a lot of headache. So let's jump into mistakes that a lot of people make when they're storing food when it comes to their prepper's pantry. Let's jump into it. Today's video is gonna be a good one. It starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so much for being here today. I'll be honest with you, it is steamy here in South Mississippi. I think it's a 102 day and we've not had rain. I've got water going all over the farm, trying to keep our vegetables alive and our animals doing well. So as we start this video, if you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or thumbs down, but that's okay. Let us know what you think about this video that helps us grow as a community. Remember, we're gonna be doing a giveaway next week. All it takes for you to be entered in the giveaway to get something free is to be subscribed to both channels, The Max and The Max Life. Let us know in the comments below that you are subscribed and that you're entered in the giveaway. You will be put into a random drawing and you may be selected next week. So let's jump into the content for today. Five mistakes that we make when we're storing food to then therefore our food won't last as long. Well, number one is just what we're dealing with right now. This sweltering heat. Where is your pantry located? When we discuss pantry preparedness and we want to make sure that we're stockpiling food, number one is the location that you're putting them in. You need to make sure that your pantries are not exposed to a lot of light. You need to make sure your pantries are not changing in temperature to the extreme from one to the other. It would definitely be better to be cool, but it does not need to go from cool to warm, cool to warm, cool to warm. It'd be better to just stay cool. Uh, if you can be in a controlled environment, that would be key. So number one is location and environment. Making sure you are in a cool, dark place and try to stay to a basic temperature. If it's 70, it needs to stay around 70. If it's 60 or 50 because you have them in a cellar of some sort, great. You do not need to be putting a lot of your food in the light or in the heat. Both of those things will cause for the food to break down your storage mechanism to break down, and therefore you have wasted maybe money or time when it comes to needing those goods. So don't make the mistake of putting your food and all your stock in hot, humid places. Make sure you're putting them in cool, dark places if all need be. Think of closets, think of cabinet shelves, think of under beds, those are all very, very good. Do not think of garages, do not think of carports, do not think of sheds. Think of ways that you can put it safely. Now, for instance, us, we have one pantry shelf that's right in the middle of our kitchen that's bright and it's gonna get all the light. However, we're eating through that one. That's the one we rotate off of and eat off of. Our year's worth of supplies, our things that we've put up for years and years and years to last a long time is in cool, dark places with no light getting to them. Number two mistake that people make is the container that they're placing their food in. So let's think freezer. If you're putting food in the freezer and you're not using quality freezer bags or sealed vacuum sealed bags, then your food may not last as long. If you have food in Ziplocs, regular old Ziplocs, or you wrap, wrap, or you wrap them in cellophane or tinfoil or some kind of parchment paper, those things will get freezer burned or not last as long. Same way if we put them on shelves. If you turn around and stockpile a lot of your herbs and a lot of your dried goods in Ziploc bags and these plastic, cheap plastic bags that can't seal off really good, you're jeopardizing your harvest. You're jeopardizing what you've spent so much time and money buying and putting up and growing. So if you are looking at items to put food in, we've done a video on long-term storage, but you need to be utilizing things like food grade buckets. If you're buying bulk, 
Look at five gallon food grade buckets. Those are very easily able to be gotten at local super centers, Walmart, grocery stores, or co-ops. You can order them online, but make sure they're good food grade quality buckets and they seal. They have a sealing agent on it or a lid that closes fully shut. If you are putting something on the shelf for long term, think of Mylar bags and seal it up. Vacuum seal it or just seal it. That way there's nothing that can get to it. If you are using Ziplocs, remember rotation is key, but making sure you're using the best quality freezer Ziplocs that you can if you put something in the freezer. Remember, if you're storing in glass, if you're using auburnware or darker colored glasses like amber glasses, that's better than using clear, especially if they're exposed to a lot of light. However, try to make sure that if you're using canned goods or glassware that you don't expose them to light. It's a great way to store, but if you don't have a proper seal or you don't have them in a better location, they will not hold up to the best of their ability. Have you thought of oxygen absorbers? If you're putting something up for a certain amount of time or you're putting them up for longevity in Mylar bags or in food grade buckets or in simple glass jars, think of having oxygen absorbers in there as well. Now, if we're dehydrating or freeze drying food and we're gonna be eating them over the next coming days, weeks, or months, we tend to not waste our oxygen absorbers. However, if we're putting up rice or grain or flour, or we're putting up our beans, anything like that, and we're doing it for long-term storage in Mylar bags vacuum sealed or food grade buckets, we're gonna put oxygen absorbers in there. Make sure you read about the oxygen absorbers, but if you're buying long-term storage options, a lot of times those companies will send oxygen absorbers with it, but you need to be utilizing those because that is another way to properly store and not improperly make mistakes. And then all of a sudden you have a five gallon bucket that's full of rodents or insects, not the good quality rice that you thought you had in there. Third mistake people make is not rotating properly. Now I'm not talking about your long-term storage, such as your rice, your flour, and things like that, maybe oats. If you have those in food grade buckets in cool dry places and they're put up properly, those will last a lifetime. Don't worry about that. Salt, sugar, same way. If you put them up correctly, they'll last for a long, long time. But I'm talking about the other things. Think of our fats, our oils. Think of peanut butter. Think of noodles. Think of those kind of items that are great stockpile items. However, they will not last a lifetime. They need to be rotated out. For instance, I love peanut butter. I talk about peanut butter all the time on this channel. I know you probably get tired of it. But for me, I love peanut butter and I buy a lot of it. However, we stockpile tons of it. I mean, tons of peanut butter. It's ridiculous how much peanut butter I go through. But I'm constantly rotating. I don't want to just take the ones that I bought and say, oh, well, I don't want to clean out the pantry. You know, those are good. They'll be fine. We'll worry about them later. Same thing with tuna and all that. Even though canned goods last a long time, I never want to eat from the newer ones. I want to eat from the older ones. So if I'm adding to the stockpile and then I'm taking away from the stockpile, adding to the back, start eating the older ones first. Rotation is key. If you're only eating what you're purchasing and your stockpile is just sitting there, don't worry about the expiration dates. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about the food that you're even putting up yourself. Those things will go bad or fats and peanut butters and all that will go rancid before you use them all because you did not rotate your vegetables, fruits, your oils, your fats, or whatever you're stockpiling. If you're buying a lot of noodles, we buy a lot of noodles. We have a, we're a family of eight. So they eat a lot, we eat a lot of macaroni or a lot of spaghetti, but I'm constantly rotating those out. Even though noodles will last a long time, I don't want to ever get in the habit that I'm saying, oh, well this time I won't worry about that. No, every time I wanna rotate. Fourth mistake people make is they put all their preps in one place. Now we've talked about this in other videos, but it also goes back to food. If I put all my canned goods, all my food grade buckets, everything I own in one place, because that's the best pantry I've ever seen. It's awesome. Well, what if a fire breaks out? What if all of a sudden mice are heavy there? What if all of a sudden roaches get into that room? What if all of a sudden someone steals your supplies because we're in a situation of a crisis? If everything is in one room, then you have nothing. It's all gone. So make sure you are spreading your preps out. Talked about this a while ago with storing your preps in places that are cool and dry. So you may have some in this room under beds. You may, you may have some in the closet right in this room. You may have some in a different place or a bug out location, or you may have some in a box that's ready to go into your car. And then you may have some right in your cupboard or right in your cabinet. Spread your preps out because if they're in one place, they're vulnerable. You're gonna always be vulnerable when you have everything that you own in one place. If all your cold stuff is in one place and ran off one breaker, guess what happens? If all of a sudden your power goes out to that one room, you may not know it because your house may be on, but that one room, you lose every freezer you have. 
So make sure your, your freezers are on different breakers or different circuits because you never want to lose all the value of the food that you've put up for the last days, weeks, months, or years. Last thing we're gonna talk about today is preserving wrongly. This is a bad, bad habit that a lot of people make because they don't learn how to preserve properly. Make sure you're honing your skills to be better. Skills are great to have, but make sure you know every aspect of that and be looking for things that may not work. So let's jump into canning. A lot of times people will can their food and they'll have their rings on their jars. And yes, they have a seal. Yes, they have a beautiful uh, jar of vegetables or meats, but guess what they do? They leave the ring on instead of taking it off. So you may give a false security of closure there or it may rust your seal and your lid out if you leave your rings on. Learn to take your rings off. A lot of people, that's one thing that we learned just a few years ago. We had been doing canning and in the South, it was just common to see people leave their rings on because they were not building these monster prepper shelves. Well, we started building prepper shelves and all of a sudden somebody walked in one day, this is somebody that came in about, it's probably been seven or eight years ago now. They said, what are you doing? Why do you have your rings on your cans? And we're like, oh, it looks great and, you know, it's nice. I was thinking they were talking about, you know, I was thinking they were talking about like we didn't can them. And they're like, no, you've canned them, you've pressure canned them, you've cleaned them. That lid is going to give you a false sense of security. If all of a sudden you open that and didn't realize it didn't have a seal, you wouldn't have known that because the lid, because the ring was holding the lid down. So you may be exposing yourself to bacteria. Also, if that lid is on there too much, then you can build up rust and humidity, especially in the south, to where that ring and that seal starts getting worn and then you don't have again a good seal on there for years to come. Let's think about dehydration. If you're dehydrating your meat or freeze drying your meat, if you're dehydrating fresh fruit or you're learning how to preserve through a dehydrator or freeze dryer, not fully drying your food out is crucial. You're gonna build moisture mold and then you've lost all your crop or all your vegetable or all your fruit. That is one bad thing that we tend to do is we tend to get overzealous about getting this done and then all of a sudden we didn't give it proper time to dry like it's supposed to and then we have moldy food. No matter how many oxygen absorbers you put in there, no matter how much moisture control, whatever moisture control barriers that you have, it won't matter if the food was not properly and skillfully taken care of and preserved correctly. So if you're learning how to cure, make sure you know how to cure. If you're learning how to can, learn every protocol to make sure that you are building the proper seal and making sure you're doing the wisest and following directions. Same way with dehydration. Do not under dehydrate or under freeze dry. Make sure it is fully dry. Also make sure that if you're buying from the stores and you go from a cold car to a hot car to a cold store to a hot store, back into your home, it's got humidity built up and then you turn around and dump that in a bucket, you're gonna have mold issues. So properly letting it dry out, maybe sitting on the counter for a few days, maybe sitting in the freezer and then coming on the counter for a few days, getting it used to the room temperature that it's gonna be in, not in a sealed environment, let all the moisture go off there, then put it in your food crate buckets or in your sealed situation or in a sealed bag and that way you've properly sealed it and properly stored it for years to come. So I hope this video helps. I don't want you to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to then turn around and look back when something bad happens and you're in a crap hits the fan situation and all of a sudden you have no food because you didn't store it properly, you put it in the wrong places, you had too much humidity and you sucked with your skills. Just being honest, it, it's time to make sure you're doing these proper steps. It's not just about buying food or just growing food. We have to learn how to put it up safely in our prepper's pantry and I hope this video helped you do that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, again, if you thought this was good, share this with somebody so you know they're doing it correctly as well and it gives them something to think about. Also, give us a thumbs up. It does help us stay on the algorithm. Our goal is to grow our channel to always make sure we're putting out good information from the prepping to the sustainable living, homesteading, and current events, making sure we're being wise in all the decisions that come in front of us. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless. Happy home.